Baseball has had no shortage of beloved players over the years. From Lou Gehrig, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, to Cal Ripken Jr., Ken Griffey Jr., Adrian Beltre, to Ichiro Suzuki, Mookie Betts, and Shohei Otani, there are some players who it just feels like everybody likes, regardless of how they're viewed as rivals to the league as a whole. And then there is the other side of the spectrum. The players everybody loves to hate, the ones you enjoy rooting against, the proverbial villains in our cherished game's long history, the ones who are not only chastised by the fans, but by their fellow players and front offices as well. Maybe it's because they used steroids, or had an ego the size of the Grand Canyon, or perhaps both. Maybe it's because they broke the law off the field, or committed any number of potential offenses on or near the field. The possible reasons are myriad, but who amongst the crop have accrued enough of these instances to be considered the most hated players in MLB history? Who seems to come up on almost everybody's shit list? Before we get to that though, I want to ask that if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. If we hit 4,000 likes in this video, I'll make a part 2 with your most popular suggestions included. With that being said, let's hop right into it. First up, Charlie Hustle himself. From the moment he hit the field as a 21-year-old second baseman for the Reds in 1963, Pete Rose played the game as hard as anyone ever has. He did so because he wanted to win, but also because he wanted to be noticed winning. There's one more important reason I slide head first. It gets my picture in the paper. Of course, Rose's hard-hitting style of play rubbed some opponents the wrong way, and sometimes even teammates. Many of these players considered him dirty, aggressive, and at times completely unhinged, like in the 1970 All-Star game when Rose barreled over catcher Ray Fossey to score the winning run. Rose would miss three games with a bruised knee as a result, but it was Fossey that suffered the real injuries, including a fractured and separated shoulder, leaving him a shell of the player he was pre-collision. At the time, Fossey was an up-and-coming star behind the dish, but this instance left him relatively crippled in baseball terms. And for what? Another picture in the paper? It was the All-Star game after all. But that was really just the tip of the iceberg with Rose. In the end, his competitiveness and arrogance got the best of him. Over the years, fans had grown accustomed to Rose being a royal pain in the ass at times, as he was involved in everything from altercations with umpires to tax evasion charges to even being accused of an inappropriate relationship with a 15-year-old. Despite all this, Rose hustled his way to several major league records, many of which he still holds today, including most career hits, games played, and at-bats. But unfortunately, being baseball's all-time hit king is not what Rose is known for principally today. It's the fact that he bet on Major League Baseball. When initially questioned about his gambling in 1989 by then-baseball commissioner Peter Uberoth, Rose claimed that he'd only bet on football, basketball, and horse racing. But of course, this wasn't exactly true, and when the truth finally did come out, Rose received a lifetime suspension, garnering him a stain on his record that will more than likely keep him out of Cooperstown permanently. Now, baseball's hit king can be found at places like Caesars Palace in Vegas, signature on memorabilia, and mingling with those remaining fans he has left on his side. While the course of fans who think the Hit King should be in the hall still have a fairly healthy voice, it seems to have less to do with who he was personally, and more to do with the sanctity of the hall itself. After all, Rose would have never won a popularity contest outside of the cities he played in, and even then, it probably depended on the night. The pitch. Bonds hits one high. No, oh, Barry, how does the baseball world hate thee? Let me count the ways. It seems like every baseball fan had one reason or another for disliking someone who is undoubtedly one of the best players who ever played the game, if not the best, period. Barry grew up on Major League Baseball fields, hitting batting practice with the big leaguers alongside his father Bobby Bonds. As a result, he developed a prodigious talent for the sport, an enormous sense of confidence, and a gargantuan ego. Bonds was constantly tussling with the media, feuding with teammates, or getting into altercations with coaches. He quickly earned a reputation as smug and unlikable. His self-centered play helped him to shatter records, but it also cost him dearly at times. Take one of the most important games in Pittsburgh Pirates history, Game 7 of the 1992 National League Championship Series between the Pirates and Atlanta Braves. If you're a Pirates fan, you probably remember that vividly. The light-hitting utility player Francisco Cabrera lined a single into left field in front of the charging Bonds, whose throw came in too wide and too short to gun down the slow-footed Sid Bream at the plate. It was a gutting moment for Pirates fans, and as it later turned out, perhaps an unnecessary one. Prior to the play, the Pirates gold glove center fielder Andy Van Slyke motioned to Bonds to play shallower with the winning run on second base. According to Van Slyke, the stubborn Bonds not only ignored the advice, but gave his teammate the middle finger. He gave me the international peace sign, Van Slyke later told MLB Network. Even breaking the single season home run record, and perhaps baseball's biggest record, the all time home run mark, held by one of baseball's most impressive figures, Henry Aaron, did little to win him any supporters. And once Bonds became linked to steroids, placing a huge asterisk next to those numbers, Barry became one of the biggest villains in baseball history. 
Not to mention the poster boy for the steroid era. Ultimately, the home run king was even found guilty of obstruction of justice in the Bulko steroid rings case for giving evasive answers under oath for his steroid usage. Even in retirement, Barry has found controversy, including in a brief stint as the hitting coach for the Miami Marlins, during which times he was allegedly described as extremely useless and unlikable. Former Marlins president David Sampson even came out later and said that he was completely ineffective as a hitting coach, stating that he would sleep in the clubhouse and not pay attention during games. He didn't work hard. It was a complete disaster. The Marlins ranked 27th in MLB in runs scored that season, and Bonds was promptly fired. Barry Bonds will likely never be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame like Rose, further tainting his legacy. What a shame. Conseco bids for the second homer of the inning, Whoa. and it settles into the upper deck. Oh my goodness. Few have impacted the modern game in quite the same way that Jose Canseco did. When the former Bash brother released his autobiography Juiced, it unleashed a hurricane of scandal on the game that it's arguably still recovering from. In the book, Canseco shined a light on baseball's steroid era and named names, including his own, along with Mark McGuire, Rafael Palmero, Jason Giambi, and a slew of others. Canseco was considered a traitor and a snitch by fellow players and a headache by the league. And despite being a whistleblower and one of the first players to admit using steroids, he was still never embraced by fans. That, of course, was nothing new for Jose. He had spent a good chunk of his career pissing people off, alienating fans, and acting like a 6'3", 230 pound diva. The muscle-bound slugger had exploded into baseball in 1987, hitting 33 home runs as a rookie and winning the Rookie of the Year award. Following spring training, he told reporters he would be the first player ever to hit 40 home runs and steal 40 bases in a season. And then he did it. Before all was said and done, he would record 462 home runs, an MVP award, and six all-star appearances. But his career and post-career have become notable for a very different reason than his on-field production, or even his steroid involvement, as he's also partaken in a steady succession of increasingly bizarre actions. On the field, Canseco was involved in perhaps the greatest baseball blooper of all time, when a fly ball hit off the bat of Cleveland's Carlos Martinez, hit Jose on the head, and bounced over the wall for a home run. Off the field, things went even further off the rails for Canseco. In 2001, Jose and his brother Ozzy got into a fight at a Miami nightclub with a couple of California tourists, giving one a broken nose and leaving the other needing 20 stitches in his lip. Since then, Jose's also been arrested for carrying a loaded weapon, aggravated battery against an ex-wife, and domestic battery against another ex-wife. In 2008, he decided to try sanction violence, challenging a former NFL football player to fight him in Atlantic City. That player accepted and knocked out Canseco in the first round. Needless to say, Canseco, for all of his exploits on and off the field, will never be inducted into the Hall of Fame or win any popularity contests among fans. How could you have a most hated players list without Ty Cobb? The Pete Rose of his day, Cobb was known for being dirty, swearing at fans and journalists, and sliding into bases with his spikes up. Cobb was also constantly getting into altercations, with the resulting stories that survived the test of time not being very pretty. Have you heard the one about him stabbing a hotel manager after getting into a fight with an elevator operator? Or about the time in spring training in 1907 when a black groundskeeper, who had known Cobb for years, attempted to pat him on the shoulder, and Cobb slapped the man? And then when the man's wife tried to intervene, Cobb choked her until his teammates pried his hands off her neck. Or what about the time that Cobb nearly choked out an umpire under the bleachers? Or the time he jumped into the stands to beat a fan who was heckling his team? With that fan turning out to be a man who was missing most of both of his hands due to an industrial accident? Or that time that he took a whip to his son after he flunked out of Princeton? But hold on. Maybe it wasn't that simple. Ty Cobb was undoubtedly an extremely competitive player with aggressive tendencies, but was he the racist near criminal he's often portrayed as today? A recent book about Cobb by a former Sports Illustrated editor who dug deep into the legends surrounding the player argued that many of the stories circulating about Cobb came from some dubious sources, and most cannot be independently verified. Cobb more than likely was no saint, but there's a good chance his legacy has been unfairly impacted by some tall tales that got circulated by those who had an axe to grind against him in the media. Most will of course not let the facts get in the way of a good story, meaning Cobb will more than likely remain one of the most hated players in the history of the game for the foreseeable future. Fly ball center field, well hit, at the track, he's done it again! Has any player who was as good as Alex Rodriguez was ever been so insufferable? In recent years, A-Rod has done a lot of work off the field as a broadcaster, social media figure, and general baseball personality to rehabilitate his stunted image, but will more than likely not have much of an impact on his legacy, at least in relation to his player persona. It's nearly impossible to find a fan who didn't hate A-Rod when he was active, even many of those in his home city where he put up Hall of Fame-worthy numbers for over a decade. But it wasn't just those fans. He was once voted the second most hated player in baseball in a 2012 Men's Journal article that pulled 100 MLB players. Rodriguez's own teammates even gave him the nickname of A-Fraud. The ire for A-Rod, of course, starts with his PED use. He admitted in 2009, after previously denying it, that he had used steroids from 2001 to 2003 while with the Rangers. 
His entire 2014 season was also spent in a suspension thanks to PED use. When not cheating with PEDs, Alex attempted a number of Bush League moves on the field. Remember when he was called out for interference after slapping away an attempted tag along the first baseline during the 2004 American League Championship Series? Or the time when rounding the bases in Toronto behind Blue Jays third baseman Howie Clark, who was under a pop fly, when he yelled, MINE, causing Clark to let the ball drop? Or how he once threw baseballs behind the Yankees' dugout with his number on them to women after he'd been pulled from a game. Off the field during this period, Alex did even more to court controversy, from being spotted out in the town with the blonde stripper while he was married, to agreeing to a photo shoot where he kissed his own reflection. He also allegedly had two, yes two, paintings hanging over his bed of himself as a centaur. You'd be saying more? So, those are MTC's picks for the most hated players in baseball history for today. However, we do still have some honorable mentions. In one Sports Illustrated interview, the former Braves reliever managed to insult women, minorities, subway passengers, and even single mothers. Rocker was also later mentioned in the Mitchell Report for allegations of steroid use. Besides that, on the field, he was known as a head-hunting, ill-tempered semi-maniac, who became infamous for his epic meltdowns in the clubhouse. Not a great reputation overall. Really, the entire 2017 Astros team could be on here, but we're going to instead single out the veteran who supposedly spearheaded the whole operation. The slugging outfielder who hit 435 career home runs with amazing defense in center field for over a decade once appeared to be a no-doubt Hall of Famer, but his role as ringleader of the Houston Astros science-stealing scandal has forever tarnished his reputation among fans, and, at least for now, Hall of Fame voters. Is this fair? Probably not, but it is understandable at least. Remember that Men's Journal Players poll I mentioned that had A-Rod as the second most hated player in the league? Pierzynski was number one. That takes some work. As one anonymous player told the journal, he likes to talk a lot of <laughs> If you haven't got five years in the big leagues, he treats you like you're a peasant. He's that kind of guy. That sounds more like frat bro behavior than big league conduct. Like Canseco, Bell was a fearsome slugger, but one who could not stay out of his own way. Incidents on the field included throwing a baseball at a fan, using a corked bat, and tackling players on his way around the bases. His off-the-field reputation is somehow even worse than that, as he stalked his ex-girlfriend, drove drunk, and committed indecent exposure in front of a man and his daughter. Now, who else do you think was worthy of mention in this video? Like we said before, if this video hits 4,000 likes, we'll make a part 2 with your most popular suggestions. Make sure to comment those below. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and click this playlist for other essay content just like this. Have a great rest of your day.